Now let's dive deeper into our pre-trained models. These models have already been trained by someone else, so you don't need to gather your own data or spend time and resources training them yourself. Instead, you can load the model and use it directly for the task it was trained for within your own production system. Now, pre-trained models within the TensorFlow.js ecosystem can be exposed in two forms. Some, like the ones the TensorFlow.js team here at Google have produced, are wrapped in easy to use JavaScript classes that you can use in just a few lines of code and are available for many common use cases. These are great for people new to machine learning and can be used in minutes, and you'll learn more about these in this chapter. Others require more knowledge of machine learning to use as they come in their raw form with no easy to use helper functions wrapped around them, and you'll be learning how to use these too. So here you've got an example of a pre-trained model known as BERT Q&A that can perform advanced text search in the web browser. Using this model, you can find an answer to a question within any piece of text you present to it. Notice here how in the demo, the question uses words that are not in the answer. If you ask it, what are the best stargazing days? It finds the answer referring to the nights during certain moon cycles, even though the days were not mentioned explicitly. This model can be used with any text and any question, and here it's shown running in a Chrome extension, so you can also use it on any web page. Now this pre-trained model is actually one of many that the TensorFlow.js team have created and have made freely available to use. You may be wondering how hard it is to use something like this. Well, using the set of official TensorFlow.js models is actually really simple. In fact, the core code for this one fits on a single slide, so let's walk through it. So first, you import the TensorFlow.js library, and then the pre-made model that you want to use, in this case, the Q&A model. Next, you can define the text you wish to search. This could be just some text on a website, but here I just use a simple string. You could then define the question the user wants to ask, which of course could come in some form of input box in a real application. Now you load the question and answer model itself. As this takes time to load, it's performed as an asynchronous operation. So you use the then keyword to wait for it to be ready, and once the model is available, our function will be called, which is passed the loaded model as a parameter. Finally, you can then call model.findAnswers. You pass to this function the question you want to answer along with the text you want to find the answer from. Again, this is an asynchronous operation as it might take a few milliseconds to execute. But once ready, this promise will resolve to return an answers object, which you can then iterate through to find the most likely answer from the given passage of text. In this case, it would predict cats as the answer to the question proposed, which is correct given the text you had to search on this slide. And that's all there is to it. It's no different to writing regular web apps. Now, since launch, the TensorFlow.js team have released many easy to use pre-made models and we're continually expanding our selection, which you'll hear more about shortly. Models exist across many categories, such as vision, body, text, and sound that you can use in just a few lines of code like you just saw. You can check out tensorflow.org slash JS slash models to see them all and to find the code snippets that show you how to use each of them. Even better, you do not need a background in machine learning to use these. Just a working knowledge of JavaScript is required, but they're still very powerful. So let's take a look at some of these in action. And as I show you each one, try to think about how you could use it to solve problems that you or someone else might actually have. First up, you have object recognition. Here, you're able to run the popular Coco SSD model live in the browser to provide bounding boxes for 80 common objects the model has been trained on. What this means is that a rectangle or square can be drawn that shows exactly where in the image the object is located. Now, before I continue, you may have noticed that some of the names of models are not particularly friendly sounding if you're new to the field. This is something you'll get used to, and it should be noted that in many cases, the name often originates from some combination of the data it was trained on, the machine learning architecture it uses behind the scenes, or the utility that it provides. As you get more familiar with these things, these names become less mysterious. Coco SSD, for example, was trained on Microsoft's Coco dataset, which stands for Common Objects in Context. This is a famous dataset that contains hundreds of thousands of images that were annotated by humans, the typical things you might see in your daily lives. Furthermore, this model uses an SSD architecture, which stands for Single Shot Detector, and the scope of which is beyond this introductory course, but know that this is just describing some of the inner workings of the model itself. And as you can see from the image on the right, this Coco SSD model allows us to 
not only understand where in the image the object is located, but also how many exist, which is much more powerful than image recognition that would tell us that something exists in a given image, but not where or how many. And that's the key difference between object recognition and image recognition. So let's see this in action. Okay, so here you can see Coco SSD running live in a web browser on a real web page. If I click on any one of these images at the top, you can see the classifications coming back in real time. Now here's just a few examples of the objects it can recognize, and you can see how you might use this for something useful even right now. On the image on the left, you can see that this dog is very close to this bowl of treats, and you can imagine that you could detect this quite easily and send yourself an alert when this occurs. But of course, we can do better than that. We can enable our webcam, and now live as I'm talking to you here today, if I scroll down, you can see it classifying me in real time as well. And as I move my hands around here, you can see the bounding box expand and contract all in real time at a high frames per second. You can see here, it's recognizing me as a person with about 86% confidence, which is pretty good. Now, what's really cool about this is that all of this is running live in my web browser on the client side in JavaScript, meaning none of these images are being sent to the server for classification. And that protects my privacy as an end user, which is very important these days. Okay, let's head on to the next model. Now, you're not just limited to using images. Here, you can use our sound recognition model to recognize short sounds. You can even retrain the model to recognize custom sounds if you wish. We even got models for understanding language. Here, you can use our text toxicity model to automatically discover if some text is potentially insulting, threatening, or toxic. Maybe you could hide potentially offensive things as a page is rendered for a more pleasant user experience. What would you make? Next is our face mesh model. This provides high resolution face tracking that's just three megabytes in size and can recognize 468 points on the human face across multiple faces all in real time. A number of companies are using this with existing web technologies and a great example of this is by Modiface, who's part of a L'Oreal group that combines face mesh with WebGL shaders for augmented reality makeup try-on. On the image on the right, it should be noted that the lady is not wearing any lipstick. This is being augmented in real time in the browser, and then the user can select different shades at will to see what's best for them without needing to install an app or even walk into a store. Let's see face mesh in action. Okay, so here you can see face mesh running live in the web browser. On the left-hand side, you can see the machine learning in action, rendering this nice mesh-like object on my face in real time. And you can even see where it thinks my irises are shown by these red circles. And if I just scrunch my face a little bit, you can see how well it updates. So, ah, and then I squeeze my eyes. You can see that updating all in real time very nicely. Now then, not only am I able to do the machine learning on the left-hand side here, I can also render this 3D point cloud on the right using 3.js. And this is one of the beautiful things about JavaScript is that not only am I able to do the machine learning, there's also plenty of other very powerful libraries out there for data visualization or 3D graphics as you see here that you can use in a matter of hours and make something very, very quickly. Now, the keen-eyed among you will have noticed that my performance right now is around 20 to 25 frames per second. That's because I'm running on my graphics card via WebGL here, and my graphics card is actually pretty old. If I change this to WebAssembly, you can see it's now going to execute on my CPU and that shoots up to 30 frames per second instead. So you can change at will what hardware you want to execute on and that's very powerful. All right, so with that, let's head on to the next demo. We also recently released two new pose estimation models in collaboration with research teams at Google. The first, MoveNet, is an ultra fast and accurate model that tracks 17 key points optimized for diverse poses and actions and can run at over 120 frames per second on an NVIDIA 1070 GPU client side in the browser. The second, MediaPipe's Blaze Pose, gives us 33 key points and is also tailored for a diverse set of poses. This extra granularity, such as tracking both hands, could enable gesture based applications that might be useful for certain projects. There is also now a 3D version of this model available too. Now both models have higher accuracy and performance over our original PoseNet implementation that some of you may have seen before. So I recommend you upgrade and try them both out to see what works best for your intended use case if you're looking to use pose estimation in a future project. If you'd like to instead focus on the hands, you can do that using our hand pose tracking model. As you can see, it can track up to 21 points in three dimensions for each hand. And with some extra logic, you can use this data to detect gestures, 
sign language, or even control user interfaces in a touchless way, opening up a whole new world for human-computer interaction use cases live in the browser. Next, you've got body segmentation. This model enables segmentation of multiple human bodies, as you can see in the image on the right. Even better, some segmentation models also bring back the pose, which you can see by the light blue lines inside the bodies on this slide. This particularly named body pics can distinguish between 24 different body parts represented by the different colored pixels shown in the image. Now the pre-made models you just saw allow you to create pretty much anything you might dream up. So let's take a look at some real examples. Here in space, use real-time toxicity filters in their web conferencing app you can see that when a user types something bad, it's flagged before it's even sent to the server for processing, and it alerts the user they might want to reconsider what they're about to send, creating a more pleasant conversational experience on the platform. This is powered by our text toxicity model that was pre-trained on a dataset of over 2 million examples of comments. Or how about this include health system that uses pose estimation models to enable physiotherapy at scale? With many folk unable to leave their homes or travel remotely these days, this technology allows for a remote diagnosis from the comfort of their own home using off-the-shelf technology such as a standard webcam that many people will have access to. Or how about enhancing the capabilities of a typical fashion website? Here I use a body segmentation model with some custom logic to estimate my body measurements, allowing the website to automatically select the correct size t-shirt at checkout. Even better, this was made in just two days using our pre-made body segmentation model that you just saw on the previous slides. And with a bit of creativity, you can take a model, add some custom code, and quite literally give yourself superpowers. First up, invisibility. This is more advanced than simply replacing the background with a static image. For that, you wouldn't even need machine learning, of course. But notice here how when I go on the bed, the bed still deforms in the image on the right as I move around to give you this ghostly effect or how the laptop screen still plays. This prototype uses body pics that you saw to calculate where the body is not so it can eventually learn all the background and then keep updating parts where it's safe to do so. And even better, this was made in under one day and runs entirely in the browser, meaning many people could try it out globally even without having a machine learning background. You simply click a link and it just works. No images are even sent to the server for classification, leading to real-time results. And next, how about lasers? Another member of the community combined his love for WebGL shaders with a TensorFlow.js model to enable him to shoot lasers from his eyes and mouth. This actually uses the face mesh model you previously saw to run in real-time in the browser without any issues. Now, whilst this is a fun demo, you can imagine using this for a movie launch to amplify the reach with a creative experience for fans or more. Or how about teleportation? By combining TensorFlow.js models with other emerging web technologies like WebRTC for real-time communication, or A-Frame for mixed reality in the browser, or even 3.js for 3D, you can now create a digital teleportation of yourself anywhere in the world in real time. Here, I can segment myself from the bedroom, transmit just the segmentation to save bandwidth, and then recreate myself in the real world environment using WebXR. Remember, all of this is running in the web browser, no app install is required, leading to a frictionless experience for the end user. Having tried this myself, it really feels more personal than a regular video call, as you can walk up to the person and hear the audio from the correct direction. Maybe next time I'm presenting to you, I'll be able to do so in your own room like this, as if I was standing right in front of you and you saw it here first, of course. Now, everything you just saw was created using a pre-made off-the-shelf model that typically can be used in just a few lines of code. My point for showing you all of these examples is that with a little bit of creativity and by leveraging your existing web engineering skills, you can use many of the pre-trained models like the ones you just saw for pretty much any industry out there, providing your customers with new features that were previously impossible to achieve within the same time and budget constraints. So keep this in mind as you learn more in this course. Think about how you can relate what you learn so that it can be combined with your existing web engineering skills to produce something new. And with that, it's time to try some of these out for yourself. Choose three of the pre-trained TensorFlow.js models from the ones currently shown on this slide, read the documentation and try the live demo of each to get yourself a feel for the inputs the model expects, such as image, text, or sound, along with the outputs it provides you. Now, some parts of the documentation might seem overwhelming at this stage, but fear not, 
you'll learn how to integrate a model into a real web application later on in the chapter, step by step from a blank canvas. So no coding is required right now, I just want you to familiarize yourself with the models that are available. And then, of course, you can answer the questions in the forum as follows. What inputs does the model need and what outputs does it provide you? What problems in your or someone else's life can it solve if you were to use it in a real application? And finally, did the model demo perform well for you? Share some examples of when it did or when it did not work well, along with how you might be able to overcome those limitations once you found them. For example, maybe you find that the estimated post points move around slightly between webcam frames. You might choose to average the found coordinates over time to get smoother results. Or maybe you're using an older device and the model runs slower than expected. Remember, as you're running on your machine, everyone will have a slightly different experience based on the hardware that you've got available to you. Maybe you can change the user experience to account for this, or if a demo supports it, try a different backend to execute the model on different hardware, such as the CPU or graphics card. So head on to the next section and share your findings with your classmates.